Hi. The hypnosis session that you're going to be able to listen to after this is very interesting. So there is no video on this. Um, it's just an audio recording. But it's a recording of a future life progression rather than the normal past life regression. So just a few of my thoughts, excuse the noise in the background, a few of my thoughts on when we go into future lives. Now, in general, I pa practice past life regression uh, hypnosis and I've been doing that for almost 12 years and every now and then whether it's intentional or a lot of times not intentional we actually go into a future life so af after having a little bit of experience dealing with these future lives I've come to a couple of conclusions number one that this is a probable future and that because I've seen a lot of different future lives that describe the future differently, I've come to realize that the future isn't set and or perhaps number two, there are multiple alternative futures. So in this alternative future, we have a female who is on a space station that has been created after the world has pretty much become uninhabitable. This is set approximately 300 years into the future and there's some interesting things here and one thing that that i found interesting as a practitioner and somebody who's done this a few times before is that the life on the space station seems to be well the leadership seems to be a little tyrannical but it doesn't seem like the person I'm talking to even thinks about it as tyranny. You, you'll see what I mean, but it's not like uh, she, and, and by the way, the client being hypnotized is a male going into a future life as a female, just to be clear. So when I talk about the life, I'm talking about the female, and if I'm talking about the client, I'm talking about a male. To clear up any confusion or to create more, who knows. But there's a lot of secrecy and there's a lot of compartmentalization, but it doesn't seem to be a big theme in her mind. It doesn't seem like she's suffering under this dictatorship so it's it's a very interesting nuanced kind of thing and you'll see um what it is but anyway they go they're dealing with another planet and at the beginning of the session they don't have any experience with aliens at all and um and then as things progress, um, they encounter some aliens and, um, and you'll see what happens. But this just goes to show you how interesting it can be when you tap into your multidimensional self. So as I say, I think that number one, the future is not set. And number two, there can be alternate timelines. This is a more bleak future for Earth than others that I have experienced in other regressions. Now, the third thing that I think about future lives is that 
we see them in order to download new possibilities. And I also think that when we see a future life, we change it. That that life will probably not happen the way we see it because seeing it is going to change things. It's just like if you went back in time and showed people films of what things look like a hundred years later and if enough people got that information saw those films it would probably change the future well i think it's the same when we do hypnosis and tap into a future life that sometimes we do that in order to avoid a certain future and so I think it's really important to understand that when you see a future life, if you do hypnosis and you go into a future life, realize it's, an, it's one alternate future and it might be more of a warning than a prophecy. It might be something that helps you avoid certain outcomes rather than just telling you that these outcomes are inevitable. So anyway, I hope you enjoy listening to this. Um, sorry that I don't have the video, but my client probably wouldn't have allowed me to put it on YouTube if I did. So I'm going to actually see if I can get permission from other clients to put more audio sessions and leave a note in the comments of what you think about listening to a session. I mean, a lot of times watching a session isn't visually that interesting anyway because you just see somebody lying down with their eyes closed talking. So a lot of times, you know, it's really more about what you imagine. So it's more like a radio program than a TV program anyway. Um, so enjoy and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much. Bye. like a, I don't know, like a, a 60 degree angle. Mm -hmm. So it's like, almost like a windshield, but it's like really big. And uh, it's kind of white, has like a very bright and uh, beautiful design. And it's kind of like, there's a table, there's a, it has a bit of like a, uh, a bit of a retro feel but like you know like a space retro feel mm -hmm. and it's nice but it's like hyper modern at the same time mm -hmm. um, and there's a there's a chair that is like a uh, like a round thing kind of uh, there's this uh, table that is round pretty big it's not like a small space it's uh it's like a decent size it's like an apartment so it's not like it would feel like on a tiny like a boat or anything like that right yeah it's more like like i live here right yeah, there's art on the walls describe that art it's like a abstract it's a painting uh, and it's it has all these like kind of like different colored like brush strokes that are lines that are just like kind of going like into each other kind of like a, in a chaotic way but it's a uh, but it's beautiful mm -hmm. and it has all these like different colors on a white canvas nice and where do you sleep there's a bed that is uh, right under it. Um, is that like a one person or two person bed? No, it's like a it's like a queen size bed. Uh huh. Uh, and it's like nicely uh, made. Uh, yeah, there's not much to it. Mm hmm. 
Good, so I want you to leave this room and see yourself doing the work that you do. How would you describe the work that you do? Um, I'm doing something on a computer. Like I'm a developer. Maybe. Some kind of, maybe it's research. Some what? It's either development or it's research or both. Mm -hmm. It's very... Uh, and what is it that interests you? What is it that captures your interest with this work? Um, I think the creativity of it. It's, Describe the creativity. Um, uh, it allows me to bring in my own ideas. Uh huh. And it's it's really valued. And so what are you developing or researching right now? Uh, let's see. It's some kind of like operative system. Uh, or some kind of machine, I think. Uh-huh. Now what do these machines do? Um, I think they're like some kind of like exploration devices mm -hmm. uh, maybe to like uh, go to places where we can't go or right um, something like that or maybe a person goes in them i'm not sure exactly okay and what is it that drives your work what is it that, that you guys, what's the purpose of this whole place where you are? It's uh, the future of humanity. Uh-huh. And what is your interest in the future of humanity? Um, well, it is to um, find a home and find uh, um, the purpose. Mm-hmm. Purpose. Um, and what has caused the need for finding a home and a purpose? Um, well, what brought you guys here? Well, Earth is like completely fucked. Mm-hmm. Like, it's to a point where it's like, it's, you can, you can live there but it's like no one does. No one does. No one does. It's uh, or maybe maybe some people still do, but it's like so. Uh, the planet has like gone through this like, or is going through like a massive cycle of. Uh, it's almost like a reboot. And. And, uh, it's just not a good place to, to, to live and humanity built these stations and we're trying to figure out what to do and it is both a question of um, where to go or where how to sustain ourselves in a way that isn't artificial as much as it is spiritual and what who we are as a species and we're more interested in where we come from and and, and uh, where we're going and uh, and we have uh, uh, we have uh, kind of socially come to a different different place as people people are still people but there's less corruption there is less uh, there's less um, struggle like humanity has come together much more mm -hmm. and people who are normal people are 
there's less injustice, there's less, uh, um, there's more peace, more, uh, uh, we're all in this together. We don't have a planet anymore. But we're so how many stations are there like yours? 700 something. And how far is yours from Earth? I don't really know. I'm not getting that. I'm just getting a feeling in my body. Describe that feeling. I don't know. It's like a pressure in my um, in my stomach. Uh, and what is that pressure telling you? Maybe that we're far away from where we went. There's, right. Um, there's this uncertainty. At the same time, there's also happiness. And what is it that makes you happy about this situation? Well, I think that we, we're still thriving and we have new generations of people just, you know, uh, being born and the earth is, is, um, something that people know about, but most people have never seen it except mm. for, you know, it's on, uh, in education. Um, and so all of these changes on earth, how much of that was human cost? 10%. Mm. It didn't really matter what we did. What was the main thing? Um, it's a cleansing, cleansing of the, um, of the, the, uh, uh entity that is earth. Like a reset. We definitely helped it. But in the end, it was a, um, there was a, just a completely unstoppable. And so, how did this cleansing begin? Oh, it, it, it's something that happens over and over, and uh, we contributed, but um, not to the degree that we were told. But it's something that was inevitable anyways, and... What was the first stage of it? Um... How do you... I mean, the first major cleansing thing that happened on Earth that led up to this current situation, like, what changed? Oh, it, it started a long time ago. It started, um... Um, very long time ago with a steady, uh, uh, steady uh, rise and, uh, the temperature of the earth, uh, got warmer, uh, the inside of the earth was moving, um, and we had storms and fires and but the um, we had we had all of it. It was the sea levels. We had it became a desert as well. Mm -hmm. so it's all of it at the same time, and tons of people died. And it wasn't sustainable. And we managed to, to, um, we met the 10% that we were responsible for. We managed to, um, we managed to re basically reverse that, but it didn't stop. And we managed to neutralize our, 
contribution. Uh, right. But um, it didn't, in the end, didn't matter. And it's a cleansing of the planet as far as we understand. And so, are there any beings from other planets that you're in contact with at this point? Not that I know. Okay. So all of this technology was completely developed by humans? That I don't know. That's what they say. That's what they say? That's what they say. Okay. But when I think about it, it, it um, it's very impressive. Very what? It's, it's very, very impressive. Yeah. Good. So I want you to leave this scene, seeing your work, and move forward in this life to the next most significant day, the most significant day we need to see. Now where are you? What's uh, going on? There's, there's this planet. There's this planet I'm standing and I'm looking at it. Are you on the planet or are you? I'm still on the ship. Uh huh. I'm back in the room that I was in with the very first. Uh huh. The big. It's not a room. It's like a hall. Right. It's massive. Describe this planet. The planet is very white. It's not, it's not ice. This is white. And why are you focused on this planet? Um, I think we're, um, I think this is where the, what, the work that I've been doing has mm -hmm. to do with this planet, but there's something that is, uh, there's something that is un something that is not going as as planned. There's like the, there's like a ship. A shift? Oh, a ship. A ship? Yeah, or like a a big like artificial thing like in between us and the planet the planet is kind of far away it's like if yeah like I can see the entire planet and there's this thing that is like like you're sitting there and what are you th what is everybody thinking about that I think that, that, I think that there's, uh, uh, there has been a lot of, um, uh, maybe panic and people are questioning what it is and, and, uh, but then it's just been sitting there and I think people have generally calmed down, but it's, uh, I have this feeling of just not being able to accept it almost or this feeling of disbelief because it's not ours it's, mm -hmm. else. it's not and it's massive so it's kind of it's really challenging people to see this, huh? Yeah.
And so then what happens? up somehow. He has like a four kind of um, it's very hard to explain the shape but it's a uh, it's like a thing that opens up almost like a beak but with four com four parts. Four what? What with four parts? It's uh huh. Like a beak, but with four parts instead of two. Right. Kind of, but it's also like oval. Mm hmm. Uh, and it's opening up. And then what happens after it opens up? Nothing right now. And are other people around you as you witness this? No, I'm alone. I'm sure other people are witnessing this, though. Sure. But you're not communicating in any way with others? You're just experiencing it by yourself? Correct. Hmm. And what's your main reaction? feel a bit afraid that something bad is going to happen but mm -hmm. at the same time for some reason I don't think it will there's something about it and the feeling is going away and there's this calm if you had to guess, do you feel that the calm in any way comes from that thing you're looking at? Or is it just totally within you? No, it's, I think it's something to do with the thing. Yeah. What does the consciousness of that thing feel like if you mm. if you think of that? It's definitely like a strong presence. Um, man, I can feel. But it's not, it's not a threatening feeling. Um, I think it's probably friendly somehow. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it's, it's just very mysterious I don't really, I don't know what it is I don't understand okay and what happens oh it uh, just took off the whole thing took off yeah but first it became like really small and then it just flew down to the planet I don't know how that happened yeah it in just like a split second, it just turned into like a tiny little thing and just like just flew back. I could see it flew fly away, but like compared to the size that it was, it got way smaller. Like it just somehow shrunk into this thing. Right. And then it flies down to the planet? Yeah. Can you see it on the planet, or is it too small now? No, way too small. It's gone. Okay. And 
And what's your reaction to that? Uh, I feel kind of sick. Because this is too much. It's just, uh, um, like, well, like humanity has come a long way in terms of science of the consciousness and the, the, um, those kind of things, technology. But that was something that was uh, com I could not explain and uh, right at all. It was a uh, very, very sudden, very uh, uh, I don't know what the word for it is, but um, not explainable. But it clearly happened. So move forward until you have the first interaction with others about this. Is, is this interaction happening in person or is this like uh, through a device? You mean with, uh, with others on your, on your space station. having a dinner with someone but it's I don't have an appetite and people are pretending like nothing happened but I think that everybody just the energy of this room is like really weird everybody's thinking exactly the same thing and no one can really believe it but we're just humans so we uh we try to just be act normal and i'm having dinner with someone a man and he has a uh, like black hair like short black hair mm-hmm Really, we're not really talking that much. We're too, we're too uh, occupied just processing what's going on. Isn't this something that you guys thought you might encounter as you travel around the universe? Didn't you think there might be some other beings? Or technologies out there? Mm, yes, but it's different when you experience it. Right. It's a different... Uh, it's just... Um, that you can't explain it. It's uh, just um, completely unreal. And... We, we haven't done anything. We're just sitting here. Mm-hmm. And what is the first thing that anybody communicates to you? So do not want to eat. Huh? Do not want to eat. <laughs> okay. But what about communicating about it, about that thing? Well, the person doesn't really want to talk about it. He just says like, oh, I think it's good if you eat. Right. And I'm like. People are like, people are really weird. People are not acting appropriately, but there's also no appropriate way of acting. Right. 
So is it mainly just like a frozen silence? Or what other behaviors are you witnessing? Well, some people are, some people are loud, they're drinking. They're just trying to not think about it. But I can't not think about it and I can't eat. And I'm just there's there's nothing else that I can care about right now. Have you thought of what the things that you're working on? Could they help you figure this out a little more? Uh, well, I'm sure. Are you thinking of any plans of what to do? It's not really up to me. Um, or even any plans of what to propose to people that could make that decision. If you could decide through your expertise and working on the things you're working on, what would you decide to do right at this stage? Send, it was all up to you. Send the thing that I've been working on. Right. Send one of those. And what do you think you could achieve with that? Some kind of Contact, initiation. Right. Uh, some uh, mm, um, we have a technology that I am working on that is a uh, um a, it's like a transmission, but it's not radio, it's not, it's like um, uh, a deeper, deeper level of, of transmission, like a, more like on the consciousness level. Mm -hmm. That is a, um, technology that I don't know how we have it, but I know how to work with it and develop um, a working system for it to be used in a way where in a situation like this, it could potentially be utilized. And why would it be better to have this kind of consciousness transmission than just more of a, like, radio-type transmission? Um, well, because, like, we can't use words to communicate with a different, completely different um, species. Right. But if we can use consciousness and um, it's more like a knowing and how it works I'm not sure mm -hmm. that's not really what I do but it what I do uses uses it and put it into puts it into a context right. of, of technology and uh, usability uh, and it, with the purpose of communication uh, or 
rather transmission but not necessarily only to um, something unknown although that is part of it mm -hmm. but also between between uh, uh, us as humans if needed because then information can be transmitted immediately without words and it's uh, everybody just knows what to do right and then it, it um, we don't have to use words we can just uh, know what to do and everybody knows what to, what to do in an instant and it's a very open way of communicating and it's a, it's a transmission of knowledge Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing that I've been working on has this it can it can do that but it's uh, it's an unmanned thing like a probe not a probe well I guess it is And it it can make these transmissions almost like a living thing, although it's it's not alive. It's but it it can to someone else it might seem that way, right? And that's also a, a safety procedure if we would ever initiate contact with something unknown which we know that we might have to at some point but at the same time it doesn't feel it never felt like we would ever need to mm. and the technology can be used for many different things because it's instant transmission of knowledge right and intelligence but so this wasn't only invented to deal with aliens, it was more an upgrade in, in human communication that could be applied to that. Yes, at least that's how it's been uh, designed and uh, uh, talked about. But I also don't know fully, but that is what I've, I've just been developing how this thing works in terms of uh, the, 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 the system, how it runs, how it interacts with our system on the station, how it's linked. Right. That's what I do. It's a part of it, but it's an important part. So as you think of this potential use do you think about communicating this to somebody else and sharing your ideas with somebody who could actually make it happen yeah I should although I'm sure that they think of the same thing Okay. I don't think that I have to really say anything. I will. But I am sure that this is what will happen. Oh, okay. So let go of this scene and go forward until the next stage of this. Either you speaking to somebody or whatever happens next that's significant. Move forward to that and tell me what's happening now. Mm. I'm having a dream. And I'm flying, I'm naked, I'm floating in blackness. And, and um, being 
communicate it to and it's my my this central point of my brain is just making this light and I'm being communicated to and somehow I know that everybody else are also being communicated to that we're all interlinked with something and it's just saying hello it's not there's no emotion connected to it it's not uh, like a warm welcome but it's not hostile at all it's just like a very like uh, emotionally void uh, uh, kind of kind of stupid way of saying hello mm -hmm. it's like very like hello It's not a word, it's just like a... And do you feel the consciousness of the others in your group? Mm -hmm. Or is this more like, does it feel like an individual communication to you? No, it's... Um... I can feel it, not that I can feel it, but I, I know somehow that other people are having the same experience. Right. It's like, there's just this like aspect of it that is, uh, just, uh, have that feeling that I'm not the only person being communicated to, but... And what is your response to this communication? It's not really a communication. It's more like a message. Okay. And what else is the message besides hello? It's nothing. Okay. Uh, it's kind of funny. Like, why would you not say anything else? It's almost. It's more like a proof of something or more like a hey we can do this right maybe they're testing us to see if, if we'll send something back if you had to guess do you think that they are aware of your reaction to this hello like, is the message already even being sent just by you thinking these thoughts? I don't know. If that's the case, then they're not sending anything back. My logic tells me that they would know. If they can do this, then that should they should be able to read our minds in some regard. Right, but that's just logic. It's not, you don't feel necessarily an intuition that that's actually happening. No. But logically, you kind of... It's more like a presence. And then... A download and then nothing mm-hmm and the download is only hello or do you feel like there might be more to the download just hello okay literally nothing else right very emotionally disconnected kind of naive almost right uh, 
So then what happens? Just go forward until the next thing that happens. Um, no, they're sending the thing. So they're sending the thing that you were working on? Yeah. So let me ask you this. Bef between that, you you said it was like a dream. Did you wake up and from a dream? Like, were you asleep when this happened? Yeah, I was asleep. And so when you woke up and encountered other people on, on your station, was there any talk about this message? What was the first feeling when you got up? Did you remember the dream when you first woke up? Yeah. And why would you not speak about that to other people? Um, I think that because it's, it's scary and I don't want to be, I don't want to be the person who's the only person who's in touch with them. Ah, uh, so you wanted to see that somebody else said it first? Kind of. And what, what were you avoiding? In not, why not be the only person that's in touch with them? Because it's so unknown. And, um, it, uh, it's scary. And what are you afraid of? Not really afraid of them. I'm more afraid that humans will do something because of that. So what are you afraid of, of the humans? That if I was the only person in, in touch with them, somehow they would, um, I would have to do something I wouldn't like. Right. They would put put me in a position where I don't feel comfortable, where I don't... Um, none of this is comfortable, but... Um, uh, I don't know. This is just, uh, unlike anything else. Yeah. And so, what is the first mention of it amongst people that you experience? He is some kind of, um, I don't know, I don't know if we're like dating or whatever, but he's also like a professional. Mm hmm And he is distressed. He's clearly, like he's, they're acting very different from how he was before. And what does he say? Um, well, he's, uh, he's like in his head, um, kind of st just staring into the ground a bit. And then he says, like, you know, I have this dream. 
and then I just said me too. How does he react that you say me too? He says that's what I thought. Isn't that weird? And that's what he said. I said, yeah, it's I don't know how I knew that, but that's what I thought too. Right. Then what does he say? He just says I wonder what's gonna happen. Implying that it's likely that all of us experience the same thing. Including the people in charge. Right. So um It's a weird feeling because it's the same feeling as if you would uh, mobilize for war, but there's peace. Mm -hmm. The unknown is the same. Right. And they haven't done anything except say hello. Yeah. But just knowing that they really exist and they are conscious is really impacting you, huh? Yeah. Everybody. And you can tell that something has changed. People are... The, the, the people who was... Uh, drinking and, you know, trying to forget, now they're, they're not doing that, they're, uh, they've all had some kind of the same experience, and it's just undeniable at this point that it's something that none of us have experienced before, and, um, Yeah, it's just it's just a new experience for for humanity as far as I know. Mm -hmm. As far as normal people go. So what brings about this decision to use this, this probe or whatever that you have? How does this get decided? I, I don't know. I just um, know that I'm being assigned. I've been assigned as the expert to uh, uh, work on this mission. I am the leading expert on this, um, not the technology itself, but the way to uh, uh, link uh, our, our uh, more primitive technology, the, the, the normal stuff, computers, and, uh, to link that to the, the thing that uh, can send this transmission. Right. And I'm being assigned. I've been assigned. And it's... Uh, uh, we're all working together, right? But the, they have decided that this is the way forward. Um, and so what are you actually going to do with the probe, where do you send it? I'm gonna send it to to the planet, not landing 
because it doesn't have to land. It's actually way easier if we down because then we could just we it can return. So you say the planet doesn't have land? No, the 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 uh, our probe doesn't have to land. Oh, it doesn't have to, right? It doesn't have to land. It's uh, easier if it doesn't, because then it's possible to retrieve it. Right. Uh, if it lands, it doesn't really have the 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 power to escape the uh, the um, the gravitational pull of the planet. Right. To the when it when you. So it would just be stuck on the ground somewhere. Correct. Right. And do you know what the surface of the planet consists of? Yeah, it's um, there's a lot of like white rock. Mm hmm. Uh, and uh, there's this theory that um, the planet has a an inner inner ocean, uh, and that's the reason why we're here to try to make this planet. Um, Basically, the somehow we're supposed to, or were supposed to, um, somehow extract the the water from the planet and uh, be on the surface because the surface is of good temperature, but it's too dry. Mm. But on the inside there's supposed to be water. Is there an atmosphere? Yeah. It's fully livable, except for that there's not a lot of water, or any water, and it's all inside. So, where would the atmosphere come from? Mm. Is there plant life on the surface at all? No. So there would have to be something generating this atmosphere. Uh, yeah, that's true. And what kind of theories do you guys have about that? Hmm. Hmm, I'm not sure. That is classified. Ah. Uh. Hmm. I think. Well, now that you're saying it, it makes sense that it makes sense that somehow they would already know about this. Well, there couldn't be an atmosphere if it was just rock and no water. Correct. And it couldn't be a good temperature if there was no atmosphere, right? Correct. Well, what are we doing here? And so, if you had to guess, why is the knowledge of this planet so compartmentalized that people don't know? It feels like there's there's a lot of um, blockages in the communication between people. That, that you're living with on this station, that there's fear of communicating. What's going on with that? That, I mean, there's not that much else to do but wonder about this planet, right? Why, why are people so afraid to communicate or speculate? Mm, I think... I don't know. But I think I have a theory, and the theory is that they already knew what this planet is, that it is inhabited, um, and that the planet is 
already being um, what I said that we were gonna do. Mm -hmm. It's already being being uh, done by not by us. By that that's the reason why there's is an atmosphere is because it's being terraformed somehow right and it's being they're doing exactly what we we're supposed to do and and if you had to guess why would your leaders not share this information with everybody that's on your station why is there so much secrecy? I don't know. Very unnecessary. Is there secrecy about a lot of things? Or is it just around this one event? Um, impossible to tell. Right. Technology came from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it's not clear how it was developed uh, but like I said it's not really my business I don't know um, but clearly there is some things that we're not being told or that I'm not being told but also clearly it seems that you and your people don't feel like you have the right to demand answers. Yeah, but it feels like whoever's down there doesn't share that uh, opinion or that they they don't care. Right, because they're communicating to all of you. Correct. But your leaders are not communicating to all of you. Correct. So if you had to guess, why are they more inclusive than your leaders? They're just different. Are different. They they probably have just a completely different set of values if they have values. Um, different way of living their lives. Right. And this sense of openness. But also, um, not hesitation, but it wasn't a di uh, like a dialogue. Right. It was a. It was more like a megaphone. Mm-hmm. And I think that they are probably probably cautious yeah okay so move forward to when the probe is being sent mm. now what's happening so it's uh, it's stopped where it's supposed to be Okay. And then what happens? Um, well, it's transmitting. But we're not, I'm not being told what it is. I'm not, I'm on a need to know basis. Uh, It's being, well, yeah, 
it's, the transmission is instant. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's over, you know, it's, it turns on and off, you know, it's like a pulse. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But you don't know what's being transmitted at all? No. It is someone else's uh, job to know that. Okay. And what are you doing as this is happening? What's your role? Well, I'm monitoring the systems to make sure that they're operating, uh, they're functional. Um, and uh, any anomalies, I will try to to uh, uh, to to uh, work around or mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, Are there any anomalies? Mm, no, not really. I'm seeing just. It's uh, it's not an anomaly, but I can see when um, uh, just when like things are being transmitted. Um, uh, but when this this thing is being communicated with, we don't know. We're not being communicated to. Right. And now that I think of it, maybe that's the point. Maybe the point of my work is to create a private conversation. Between who and who? Between whoever is calling from our side to whoever's down there that decided to communicate with all of us. It makes me angry because we already know that they have the power to communicate with all of us. So why don't we um, get to do that? Right. It makes me very angry because I, I just realized what they're doing. So then what do you do? Um, well, I'm not really doing anything because right now it's, I can't jeopardize the mission, I can't. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that, hoping that, um, that there will be a different form of contact. You said before that humanity has made strides in understanding consciousness. What kind of understanding of consciousness could you apply to this situation? Well, my body feels really weird. Just breathe. If humanity has gained knowledge of consciousness, Is there a way that you could use consciousness to get around this private conversation? Maybe. In theory, yes. Okay. And in th according to that theory, how would that work? Just theoretically. It would work by um, uh, 
uh, shutting down the census uh, and other uh, functions of the brain uh, through a meditation and open up the channel and then the, the brain starts uh, operating more like a like an antenna um, rather than a, a enclosure mm -hmm. is that why maybe they communicated with you in your dream yeah probably maybe they they can probably sense us try it I'll try it in secret yeah and so what happens with this communication that you don't know what what it is but on your technical side what 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 do you see next nothing it's over it's returning okay everything looks normal according to plan if you had to guess are there other people that feel this anger at not knowing what's happening with this I don't know I don't know if they figured it out yet right I'm sure some people are feeling the same way, but um, um, it's, it's hard to say. People aren't really that, they don't know exactly how this all works. And it's, uh, it's not really a, a well-known, uh, it's not a public thing. Okay. Uh, although it's it's not it's not a secret but I think that the inner workings not the inner workings the, the technicality of it and like the purpose of it is uh, not fully uh, explained people or people don't care people don't it's just like an um, unknowingness about it in in, in, in general. Mm -hmm. um, um, exactly how that works or what it does. Um, yeah. Um, uh, so I don't know if if other people feel the same way, but if someone figured it out, which I'm sure then I'm sure that someone else might be feeling the same way. Okay. So I want you to leave this situation and I want you to go forward until things have become more clear and things have developed, however far you need to go in time until there's much, much more clarity on this situation. Now you're there. What's happening now? I'm on the planet. What's it like there? Um, it's, it's bright. I'm wearing sunglasses. Because the ground is so bright, so it's just uh, kind of hard to see. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily that warm, it's more um, just the sun being reflected. And do you have a space suit on? No, it's uh, fully breathable. Okay. Um,
And what is the surface smooth or these white rocks like? What's it like now that you're on the surface? No, it's pretty rough. It's kind of um, they have this like wavy texture. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's it's beautiful. It's uh, um, it doesn't really look like Earth. What does the sky look like? What color is it? Um, it's uh, it's blue. Mm-hmm. And what does the sun look like? Um, it's uh, it's smaller. But it has like a different, um, it has like a different uh, intensity, it's like a different, I don't know, it just looks a little bit different. What color is it? Um, it's like has a little bit more of like a reddish, uh, but it's, it's not like, it doesn't make everything like look red or anything, it's just like. Um, it's, uh, it's very beautiful. And what have you guys found out about why the atmosphere is there? Um, well, the planet is being terraformed. Mm-hmm. By who? Um, by these beings. And have you encountered these beings? Um, yeah, they're not here. What do they look like? Um, they have like, um, uh, they look kind of weird. They have, uh, uh, they have these like kind of robe-like clothes, and then um, they have like a kind of like a flat head that's like uh, wide, and then like uh, two eyes. Uh, they're bipedal, uh, but they definitely have like a weird like wizardy vibe. Um, How do you communicate with them? Um, well, we don't really communicate with them, although they, um, we have like, we, we're like on a different part of the planet, but in terms of just technically how we're communicating with them is completely through consciousness. But for them, it's very easy to communicate to us, but for us, it's we can't really communicate it's not an open channel but because of the technology um, then communication is possible mm -hmm. uh, but we're more um, we're on this planet and they're seemingly totally cool with us being here. Right. Um, and the planet is beautiful, but but dry, and but there's no not a problem with water. Uh, the atmosphere. We have water, but it's all. Uh, an artificial system that uh, allows us to to get water and, uh, and where do you get the water from uh, we get it through um, it's like pipes that just go across the surface 
uh, to uh, from wherever it is uh, that they're bringing it up from. So the water is underground. Yeah. The water is on the ground. Is there a theory for how it got there? Uh, that I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I have never asked that question. Okay. Uh, and do you have structures on the surface to live in or do you just visit from the ship? From no, we're... Uh, uh, we have structures, uh, but it seems like um, some people live on the ship or the uh, station. Some people uh, live down here, and there's also um, a lot of uh, research and uh, research being done down here. And um, uh, also, we simply can't build fast enough to house people down here. Um, but the idea is that eventually we will have uh, a functioning society here. Mm -hmm. um, and we're still, um, we haven't integrated fully with the, um, the other ones. We know that they're there. And, um, I think the communication, the, the dreamlike communication, uh, just never happened again. Hmm. Uh, so... I think that uh, they were probably discouraged from communicating with all of us. And they probably put trust in our leaders. They did trust your leaders, you think? They probably uh, trusted our, our leaders somehow. Right. Um, but. Um, so the leaders have more communication with them, if you had to guess? Yeah, they possess the, the technology that makes right. it possible for them to actually communicate. Um, and there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing that is, uh, um, you know, they're, they're just there. We're used to it. Uh, it has become normalized but at the same time it's still mysterious right and the the but i still reach out in my dreams uh-huh and i during like um I try to communicate through meditation, even though it's hard. But sometimes I can feel a connection. Uh, it's a very interesting place. It's not the most exciting planet, mm -hmm. but the presence of the the those other ones, they uh, it makes it very fascinating. Right. But it's because I'm trying to communicate that it makes it very interesting. And I believe that the communication should be open. Yeah. Good. So I want you to leave this scene and move forward 
to the very last day of this life. You're at the very last day of this life. Where are you now? I'm um, in my home on this planet. And it's, uh, it's small. Um, but it's, um, it's beautiful. It uh, has almost like a marble looking, um, I think it's, it's created from the rock of this planet. Yeah. Uh, it's very beautiful and bright. And, um, in my bed and one of the beings is there and it's a, a very dear friend well he he is a very dear friend and how did you get in this kind of closer communication with them to become friends? What, what changed? Mm. Through my meditation, I uh, managed to practice uh, to establish contact and to have conversations. Not with words, but with simple the thoughts. And then it turns out that a lot of people did the same thing because they all realized that this is that this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, and they all did. And there was some kind of big thing that happened uh, where we. Um, changed we changed the system of how uh, one thing that was rev that was revolutionizing the way that we communicate was a small version of the device that I helped manufacture and it allows for our brains who are just very slow at at this uh, opening up the channel to communicate we're not advanced enough to be able to do that on a whim it takes it takes a long time for us to get into the state of being able to transmit so this um, this device helps with that. It does the same thing, but it helps um, so we can uh, uh, keep an open open channel. And that device was secretly being developed, but not by the leaders. Right. But as part of a, an uprising, a, 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 a peaceful uprising. Mm hmm. And at, at a certain point, there was a, simply nothing that they could do, and uh, they decided to to let go and uh, they realized that it, that it was better right to do it that way and they backed down it took a took a long time and we could become friends and they're beautiful they have really beautiful minds they look they look weird but their minds are very beautiful and very, um, their thoughts are very pure 
and they think that we're very interesting because uh, our thoughts are so impure and it, to them it's just uh, so interesting and for us it's like hanging out with angels or something mm -hmm. pure, these pure intelligent beautiful beings uh, and they're uh, you know they're great they're very creative they're very artistic uh, but not in not in terms of creating physical art it's one of their thoughts are very artistic they're uh, they have a different uh, different interesting perspectives that are all unique from from individual to individual and that's their art it's uh, their, their uniqueness is their art and I guess it also kind of made us realize that we're the same in that regard but we just we do things that are more physical we're more focused on creating not more focused but we do that part of it as well right they don't really do that they don't really see the point because they can just they can just um, um, show it you know like it's it's just there it's consciousness like they, mm -hmm. know, they just their art is in the consciousness of everything so it kind of makes no sense to create physical things right it just makes it harder and they don't really they don't really see anything like that if it's harder it's not it's not better just because it's harder. Then they don't see the point of that. What is their spiritual perspective that you've discovered or learned from? Well, it's uh, um, they're just always at peace. Uh, I think that the spiritual perspective it's not really clear because I think it's too complex mm -hmm. for us to really comprehend uh, but it's actually very simple just what they communicate is just you know it's kind of like just it's being broken down into uh, um simple feelings uh, with a twist uh, and that's that the their little like philosophies or whatever like their little like their art uh, but the it, in general they're just uh, it's all about love it's all about um, openness but also they're um, they have a bit of a weak spot where they just don't it took a while for them to understand us and they simply thought that we communicate through our leaders but we don't want that and when that finally was established and everything changed then they could share more with us but they share um, it's not I don't know how to describe it it's not they don't go into um, they don't really talk too much about the details of anything in terms of 
spirituality. For them, it's not spirituality. For them, it's just the way things are. Mm -hmm. For us, it has a... For us, it's a clear thing that is a more connected with science now but for them it's all just like obvious right and uh and um they're they're very interesting because they're just very peaceful yeah and they don't have they don't have um like egos like humans have right um they're very um, limitless beings, but they also don't care about being limitless. Mm -hmm. They're just chilling. Great. And so what happens to cause you to leave that body? You mean how I die? Yeah. Um, well, I'm communicating with my friend, the 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 being, and I'm um, I know that I'm gonna die because I'm old and I can feel I can feel that it's my time. Yeah. And. Uh, I'm just, you know, he is showing me the art that he is making out of, out of my death. It's very beautiful. And it's this burst of energy and he's making it look a little bit like a moving painting just because I'm human and it's uh, me flying on a on this like in this burst of energy and, and I see that and I just know that it's all going to be okay. And there's nothing but, but love. And, and we've learned so much from, from these guys. Uh, and uh, I see the artwork and I kind of become the artwork. So you become that burst of energy? Yeah. How does that feel? Feels just what it sounds like. It's, uh, feels wonderful. It's, uh, very thrilling. It has this, like, unlimited excitement but peace at the same time and what do you realize after leaving the body after becoming this burst of energy that you never could get while you were in the body, if anything. Mm, that this is our true, the true, um, um, our true form. Not true. That's that's not the right word. Because our bodies are also a true form. But it's it's this is the the inner the 
what's behind. It's more is what's behind the body. Mm-hmm. Uh, not behind, but I guess in like behind my back. It's like yeah. But it's also not inside. It's just like within. But I don't know. And is his consciousness present with you now that you're out of the body? Um, no, it's fading away. Okay. It's, uh, it's, and what is around you now that he fades away? Um, it's, this, uh, uh, it's this stillness. Just be in that stillness and let go into that stillness. And allow the body and the consciousness to integrate this experience. Allowing it to integrate into the body, the mind, and the emotional system as you become aware that you're lying on the bed. Coming back into the present life, into the present focus. And effortlessly allowing any information or energy shift from that experience to integrate into this current life without bothering you in any way mentally, physically, or emotionally. Trusting that the body, the mind, and the spirit knows how to integrate this completely without any disruption, with a smooth integration and a smooth change of frequency in a way that only allows for more imagination and creativity. Now in a moment I'm going to count to ten and on the count of ten you'll be wide awake feeling wonderful all over as though you had a nice nap and a nice sleep. You'll feel truly rested, refreshed and relieved. Now follow me up as we go and on the count of ten you'll be wide awake feeling wonderful all over. One, two, you're beginning to breathe a little faster. Your blood is beginning to circulate a little faster because you're beginning to wake up now. Three, four, you're becoming aware of the physical body, very much aware of the physical body. You can move your arms and legs around, get the muscles working and the blood circulating because it gets tiring laying in one position. We're getting everything moving again because you're very aware of your physical body. You're focused on it now because you're beginning to wake up now. Five, six, you're becoming aware of the sounds in the room and the sounds outside of the room. You're very aware of your physical surroundings. You're oriented back here in this time in this place and you're beginning to wake up now. Seven, eight, you're coming up very nicely now, very nicely. Nine, ten, wide awake, back in the room. Take your time. 